hello, John. And so um, today we're going to talk about RTE receiving 725 million over a three year period. And there's a lot of people not very, very happy about this. Some would argue that the government is buying the election. Um, so what's your take on it? My take is that it's a lot of money and it doesn't grow on trees. That's number one. And uh, I find it very peculiar that uh, this money has come at this point in time when there's an election due in six months time. Uh, it's, it's a lot of money. So what's the problem in RTE that they need that all that money? Okay, because because like they only employ, they only employ almost two thousand people. They're going to, even though they're getting seven hundred twenty five thousand, they're going to let go four hundred, which says a lot about the organisation in terms of like, uh, they're not very creative. If you can't uh, keep on your four hundred people, those people that were going to let go, when you're getting seven hundred twenty five million plus, you got to remember RTE will have three revenue streams. Okay, they'll have the license fee, they'll have advertising, and they'll have seven hundred twenty five million. And they still have to let go four hundred people out of two thousand almost. So, I think it says a lot, a lot about the organisation, you know. Well, it it does. But um, uh, I did a little bit of re did you did a bit of research on it? I did a bit myself there earlier. What did you uh, discover? Because uh, don't forget, I worked in television when I was in my early twenties in London and uh, independent television for the London area Monday to Friday all associated with diffusion and to have that marvellous um, comedy around the Christmas time uh, um, a kind of dinner for one and it's quite, quite humorous I don't know if you ever saw it but it's, it's great gas now RTE employ actually 1,879 people mm -hmm. and uh, from what I can see uh, their salaries uh, range at a couple of different points of view, but I think the average salary is around fifty thousand. So they're they're able to live in a, in a good way. It put a different figure there earlier, and then it said fifty thousand. Journalists get get around sixty or fifty or sixty thereabouts, and presenters get more. And um, and then you have cameramen. And they would be well paid because a uh, cameraman, uh, the outside cameraman, he'd have a have to have a lot of experience. Uh, inside and in when they do programs inside, uh, those cameramen are video operators. But they were always well paid, even when I was in the television station in London, and I got a fair idea of it about pay and that. And there was managers, a manager of the this week and a. And RTE would have managers as well, and they would be on a good salary, anything up to a hundred thousand. And so there's various salaries, and then the staff, you know, clerical staff, and that, and they'd probably be the lowest paid. Uh, but they would be having a, they would be able to have a living wage, I would think. And um, the number of employees, it doesn't break them down to say how many. Um, how, how many um, are male employees and how many are female employees of that 1,879. Um, I would venture to say that probably more than half are ladies uh, There would be in the clerical and some of them then are presenters. There's two that stands out and are well paid, Claire Bourne and um, Miriam O'Callaghan. And they'd be on there on... Um, Two hundred thousand odd million uh, Callan and three hundred and fifty or something thereabouts for for uh, uh, Claire Byrne, and um, and then I think there's other ladies that was on. Um, uh, you know there was lady lady uh, newsreader said they'd be on a good salary as well. Mind you, it's not so easy to get the exact salaries for newscasters and that because people that are in the public eye uh, often are well paid and and then what about the 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 people that do the 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 weather forecast from meteorological air do they get a bit of extra money because they're on the television these are all little factors uh, about uh, 
and then they are paid by the meteorological office and they get extra money when they're actually on the television. And then you have the radio. You have radio presenters as well. And Joe Duffy is well paid. Um, around at 260,000 mark and thereabouts uh, because he's pretty well known around the country, isn't he? Mm-hmm. And uh, there's other radio presenters uh, that present uh, programmes and uh, the like of, and I think was well paid um, uh, presenter that does an afternoon programme. And uh, there's other ones as well that do morning programmes. Gay Burton was well paid uh, when he was... Uh, uh, when he was a presenter, he started off in the in the sponsored programs. There was Prescott and him called. I'm giving you a bit of history here as well. And uh, he was good at talking to people. I remember there was one in Fairview and there was older folk there at the time. And he seemed to be very well able to get on with them. And um, there was two presenters, Harry Turlier and uh, Jimmy McGee had a, an agency that that did uh, uh, was able to produce these sponsored programs, and that's where Gay Bourne got a start. And uh, then he become um, a presenter or thereabouts, and and all the rest. Of it. But he he had a tough time with RTE in the beginning. He had only a three months contract, even though he was fairly good. Uh, but eventually he was earning big money, and Pat Kenny earned nearly a million pound a year when he was there. When a million pound was a million pound, so. I don't so, think uh, I, I I I don't think Pat Kenny ever earned a million pounds. I think it was half a million. He did, he did, he did. You see, unfortunately, I have the memory of all these items. It would have been maybe less, but at one time that's what he was earning, and uh, which seems a lot of money. And Gay Bourne earned a lot of money, but he he had um, an accountant the name of Murphy, and Murphy uh, creamed off most of it. And uh, by the time Murphy met his maker. Gay Burns money was gone down to Swanee and he actually owed more money. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah, gay, gay. you never put your eggs in one basket if you're going to be earning big money. You spread it around. Yeah. So I mean... that you're not if something fails, you're not going to be just um back to where you started. And Gay Burn was back to stare. He was he was unfortunate with the, with 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 where he where he whom he trusted, and uh, you got to spread your risk. And it's not right in life if you're earning big money, uh, and uh, these people earn big money. And I just funny enough, as we were talking about RTE, I was thinking about Christian TV Ireland. I doubt if we'd have that number of employees, and uh, when when we do get established, and I hope we're we're in, in we'd be able to receive some state money as regards um, whatever might be available uh, for this uh, effort that we have. And we have near, nearly gone on 2,000 videos already produced and all good information uh, uh, that's on the public domain. And yes. uh, we see that RTE got this vast amount of money. Now, from, from, from uh, advertising, as far as I see, uh, they were getting... Um, let me see. Um, um, advertising, uh, average average advertising. Uh, they were getting um, went to the see now. Just a tick. Advertising revenue. Um, advertising. Um, now uh, they were getting the big money. Uh, I think twenty. 28, uh, let's see, 28 million or more in 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 advertising. Now, it's not broke down between uh, the television and the station. Don't forget the, the, the RTE television uh, and then to have um, Radio 1 and Radio 2 and Lyric FM and Radio Nagel. Uh, so, like, uh, they all have advertising so there must be there's 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 money coming in there too so and then to have the license fee so uh, in some ways uh, did they live within their means because they had uh, all this um advantage uh, that uh, independent tv3 i don't think that has that sort of advantage it uh, have to depend on on their advertising don't they and and maybe have a uh, uh, not as much employees as RTE have. And RTE have lovely grounds out there in Donnybrook. 
Uh, what they were even Des Res. They were even talking about um selling off some of the grounds to make money. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The thing about it is that um. I think the independents, I mean, Virgin Media have been very vocal about um, RTE's new financial model. And I think that like the independent television uh, stations won't take this sitting down. I think you'll probably hear more of it. It'll probably be referred to European Union or something because I think it's wrong. I think if for, for an independent station of its size to receive 725 million over three years and also has, has the license fee and the advertising. I mean, if they were to give up the advertising and hand it over to the independents, that might be something, you know, but um, it doesn't look as if they're giving away anything really to the independents. And then oh, you got to... Not. No, no. So like... Um... Um, uh, there was an article that um I got there, um from uh, Waterford uh, news uh, newspaper and by uh, a senator um lady uh, Sherlock uh, Sherlock, and uh, her her views uh, was very confusing to yours truly because um they are talking about public broadcasting as if it was a sort of such a necessity. Um, I think they should be able to stand on their own two feet. Uh, they have the advertising, and they have the, the they have the advertising, and they have the um, uh, the license, the license fee. fee, and that seems to me to be sufficient. Uh, so you got to live within your means, don't we? All have to live within our means, and uh, uh, so as uh, we can have a surplus, perhaps, within our means. But if we spend more than what we actually are are receiving well we're going to be in in uh, in a very peculiar situation i.e. bankrupt uh so you live within your means and uh RTE I think for some reason or other uh didn't live within their means and I think um as regards employees and this business of making four hundred redundant and all this uh, I think that we we'd like to see a more Positive approach. In other words, did they have too much? Did they acquire too much staff uh, with managers and all the rest of it? I mean, you have to have staff all right to, behind the scenes to keep the wheels running. But how many do you need uh, for a station in a country this size? Now, I notice in other big countries to have obviously a lot more employees because they have a much bigger market. France and Britain, uh, they they their their budgets would be much higher. But we have a relatively small country here, and uh, so therefore, uh, our budgets should be more moderate, and the number of employees should be sufficient to have the the the, the wherewithal for the station to be able to run in a proper way, if you get me drift, and to present programs that are in, uh, encouraging to the. Uh, to the Irish people, and regretfully, I think some some of their programs don't meet those requirements. Uh, they seem to have an agenda that's uh, unfortunately not conducive to the general Irish public, as far as I see. And some of their feature programs, and i.e., their special investigation and all the rest of it, they seem to focus on on various things that are not kind of conducive to the Catholic faith, if you get me drift. Uh, they want to sort of cater more for the Irish market and 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 uh, stop going down a road that's not conducive to the to the Irish past and what we had to endure our, our ancestors with suffering and persecutions. That's the last thing we want is to be we want somebody to represent our views and Regretfully, for example, there were a series Fair City, and I don't think I ever heard mention about prayers or anthem uh, or a priest. It just seems to be a very secular type program. Now, I don't know who looks at these. Obviously, people do, because it's running a long time. So these are the sort of situations. I mean, if you're if you're if you're in Ireland, you want to cater for the, the people that's in the country. And have a care, and uh, don't be doing everything with this government uh, that and, and that that is inflicted on us. They seem to be following a certain course that's not conducive to the Irish um, interests, as far as I see. Uh, I I've looked at some of the programs, and it leaves a bit to be desired, in my opinion. 
That's it. I suppose, look, the thing is, <clears throat> most of us most of us would agree that we do need a national news organisation. That's a good idea and it should be public funded. That's OK. Um, if you look at the BBC, the BBC's model is that there's no adverts um, and any, anybody who's independent takes the ad advertising re revenue. There's a big difference between the BBC or the, the population over there. 60 million hours is about five or six million. So <clears throat> it would, that, that probably wouldn't work. But I think. So for them to have the license fee, the advertising and the 700, 725 million, it just seems a little bit greedy, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, it seems a lot of money and uh, and then that's a budget for that's for three years or something. Yeah. Well, it's very difficult for anyone to know as to why an organisation needs that kind of money. I think it's it's not conducive to what I call democracy. Um, uh, it's nearly a billion pound to show you about uh, about less than a quarter. It's almost or half the cost. Right. It's almost half the cost of the children's hospital. Well, you see, the, 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 well, of course, uh, that's another example. Um, we don't hear much from the media, uh, this uh, <clears throat> public service broadcaster, which people seem to think that we need. Um, I might have a different view, uh, but um, the fact of the matter is that um, uh, where this, uh, the hospital is cited by most people regarded as about the worst site that anyone could pick for the children's hospital. After all, when children are ill or even when children are not so ill, they need fresh air. They don't want to be living in places like at James Street, but fresh air wouldn't be the the, the factor there. Uh, it's it's in a, it's in nearly in a city uh, uh, environment with with traffic right left and centre and a very difficult place to get to. I think people would probably need to travel up on trains uh, and maybe get a taxi up to it because uh, how could you drive to it? You can't drive to it as far as I see. Uh, and uh, because even years ago it was a no go area as far as I'm concerned. It was too much of a bottleneck. And then going back years. So um, it, it, that seems to me that the public broadcaster being sort of tied with this business of the license fee to the government of the day, uh, they're in a compromising situation. They're not as independent as they should be, in my way of thinking. I think getting the, the, the license fee and the advertising that they do, considering that they have the best of both worlds and they have quite a a sizable chunk of the advertising market, about 28 billion or more. 28 uh, well, million? Well, not 28 million, beg your pardon. Uh, or 280 million, uh, not 28. And uh, other ones have uh, a lower. Uh, the newspapers only have about 10, 10, 10 million. Uh, I wouldn't see the advertising. Um, uh, and then the salaries are pretty good by and large. Uh, around the 50,000 mark uh, and maybe a bit less for um, clerical staff uh, but they're all be very reasonably well paid and there's various grades in, in television stations and uh, you know they, they they would be and don't forget then to have the RTE one and um, and then to have having a got uh, RTE two um, they have T, they have the Tierney G, they have Lyric Ever, they have a few stations and they all advertise. Uh, so, um, and the gates of the, uh, Tierney G, they all advertise and they have staff. So, when we hear about uh, 1,879 staff, does it include the whole rigmarole or is it just RTE television out in, out in Donnybrook? Uh, does it include all the other um, stations that they have, the RT1 radio and the RTE2 radio and the Lyric FM and uh, Tierney G in, in the west of Ireland? Uh, we don't know. Does, does, does all these employees include all these these outlets, you know, because there's presenters on Lyric FM and they're quite talented. You see. Very good. So, so there you go. Way are they, but yeah, yeah, I just think there's a there's a lot of questions to answer. I don't think it'll be the end of it. I think, as I say, I think the independents um will kick up a fuss, and they'd be quite right to do so. Um, I think that uh they're talking about increasing the fund for the independents from the license. I think the the license 
uh, the license fee covers about 4%. They get the independents get a, a very small amount, 4% or something um, for their broadcasting. Um, and they're increased that to 7% or something. It's just not enough. And I think anyway, that's... that the thing is that, that they have all this um, in- income. And uh, yeah, and you wonder why they, they get all this. Uh, um, I think uh, they should be able to put the advertising and the, and the, and the license fee that should be sufficient, I would think, that they could have a slimmer organization. They must have expanded the staff, and the staff that they have, uh, the that seems to be one thousand eight hundred and seventy nine, according to what I read. I just wonder, does that include Tony Brook, and does it include all the other outlets that they have by way of the radio? Oh, it would. And the it... Very- it does, absolutely. Right. So the 725 is not just probably for RTE, it's for the radio stations, for all the, it's for the whole right, lot. Right, yeah, it's the whole lot, yeah. Well, yes, well, well then, um, the, the, who's top heavy? Because I, I, I who, who, who's top heavy? Because there, there'd be a good lot of black room staff that would help all these things to come about. There's controllers and all the rest of it, and, and um, floor managers and so on and so forth. It's a whole and designers and uh, directors and produ- producers and all the rest of it for some of the programmes. And, uh, for example, do they sell any programmes abroad? I think if you produce quality programmes, you're able to um, export them. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and That's another um, I, avenue. And, but you want to have programmes that are fit to be exported, the same as when you're making goods. You'd want to have programmes... Uh, of- uh, You'd want to have programs of you'd want to have programs of the standard of Christian TV Ireland is what you're trying to say to export them. <laughs> Correct and right because we we do a, a certain amount of research, but we we have experience of of uh, life, and uh, as I say, I have some experience in the TV business, and I know the sort of people you've you've researchers and that, and they do a great job as well, uh, but. Uh, you you've got to pre- present programs uh, that have a broad appeal, mm. not just a narrow appeal, and examine the issues from the perspective of our great Irish culture. I think I think John, where they've gone wrong here probably is, and we've just covered it there a few minutes ago, when you said, "Is it for RTE or is it for the other stations within RTE?" You see, and it is. See, this is the thing. A lot of people think that seven hundred and twenty-five million is going just to RTE for TV, but I don't think it is. As far as I know, it's going to all the organisations within RTE, all the radio stations. You know that they have all the Irish stations, all the different parts of it. Right. And then, yeah. and then, when you see seven hundred twenty-five million in that context, it it looks a little bit different because, as you say, there's there's loads of people in all these little organisations. So I'd be interested to see. Where exactly the seven hundred twenty-five million is going? Is it just RTE TV, or is it going to all the rest of the umbrella organisations within I RTE? It probably would be going to some to the others, but uh, they, they need to. I think the various organisations that have it, they, they need to stand on their own feet. Like there's no point in in having an organisation um, here, there, and yonder, and that has to be subsidised all the time. I mean, we can understand the National Railway has been subsidised uh, because otherwise you'd be you 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 you'd have to have footage everywhere, maybe cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we have the railways and it closed a lot of railways, of course. Uh, but uh, which was a very short-sighted thing to do in my book. So you you've got a sort of uh, because then they had to build all these motorways, and you can see sometimes they're on the crowded side, but. Big lorries flying along and all the rest of it. So we 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 I think um like everything else, you you as the fellow says, hasten slowly. And um uh, the like of RTE, if they're going to be kind of getting funds right, left, and center, it can make them not as lean, as slim and lean as they might need to be, having regard for being able to produce programs, but not with the vast amount of people that they seem to have, um, which seems more excessive for a small country like this. Yeah. Slim, slim it down and have enough to do the job. I mean, we're producing programmes 
on 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 a on a on a, on, a, on, a, on a wing and a prayer, if you like. But I hope we might be in receipt of some funds. We have some donations, but I hope we'll receive some funds from the powers that be. That's it, that's... Some funds here, Mark, for for the like of what we stand for. Ask and you shall receive. But I tell, I tell you, you're going to need funds because there'll probably be 400 CVs coming in from RTE soon. <laughs> right. Well, there you are, you see. So they've got a, a book of the money, and I think that that's a very peculiar thing to do, considering there's an election coming. It seems a lot of money, uh, and uh, when they have all these other avenues for, for revenue, uh, it doesn't make sense to yours truly, uh, in that sense, uh, quite frankly. And uh, I, I think it's, I don't know what to make of it. Is it I hope it's not an, an election gimmick. That's it, that's you want it. a you want a public broadcaster that's that's able to sort of be independent as requires the way they they handle things. They don't want to be anti government or anti this that or the other. To have a, a pragmatic approach based on experience and all the rest of it, you know. And call call out what seems to be going astray when it does go astray. And we we we've commented about various matters that we're, we're not too keen about what the government inflicted on people so we we don't get the discussion that we do whatever the government proposes seems to be supported by the media which includes rte that's right that doesn't seem objective to my way of thinking john malone thank you very much you're very much Alba.